All right, well, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly Stevens. This is Carly Stevens Books for all things writing, publishing, and indie author life. And I am very, very pleased to be talking to Chris Mandeville today. Um, Chris writes science fiction and science uh, science fiction and fantasy, as well as nonfiction for writers, and has been teaching writing workshops for more than 15 years. She's the author of 52 Ways to Get Unstuck, Exercises to Break Through Writing Writer's Block, Seeds, a post-apocalyptic adventure, and the time travel adventure series in real time, as well as short stories in several anthologies. When she isn't writing, she loves to cook, travel, and hang out with other writers, which really works out well for me. Welcome, Chris. <laughs> Hi, thanks, Carly. I'm excited to be here. I've loved getting to know you through local author events here in Colorado, and uh, and I'm excited to be on your YouTube channel. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's been lovely. So I'm so glad to have an excuse to reconnect. Um, so before we talk about today's topic, which is all about writing an author bio, which is an kind of an underserved question, I think, in the author community, what is it that got you into writing um, in the first place? I've written my whole life. I'm one of those kids that would, you know, write little weird things or just write for fun, but I never thought of it as something that I could do as a career. I thought, oh, well, you're supposed to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. And it wasn't until I had already gone to college and graduated with a degree in something totally unrelated and worked in advertising for several years that I said, you know, I think what I really want to do is, is write a novel. Um, so I didn't start out writing short stories as an adult. I just dove right in and wrote my first novel and have been writing ever since. That was in about 1989, I think, 1990 is right around when I started writing, uh, writing novels. And I just have never looked back. It's amazing how many times I hear that people grew up loving writing and just didn't realize or were told that you couldn't make a living or it just wasn't worth your time and and I love how it, no matter how long it takes people to kind of return to that love, that writing is always, is always something that you can return to and, and you can make something out of. So that's, that's really beautiful. Um, so since our topic today is um, author bios, you know, those, those little, um, I guess blurb wouldn't be the correct term, because that's the, the, the bit on the, on the back of the book, but just that little bit about the your author life why do you need one in the first place if there's somebody out there who's writing their first book maybe they're thinking what's the what's the point why do people need author bios at all well there's a couple different layers of answer to this so first of all you need a bio if somebody asks you for one so if you are if you have a publication then the publisher will say i need a bio or if you're going to be speaking to a group, the organizer will often say, I need your bio so that I can introduce you just like you introduced me today. But the, the real reason you need an author bio, in my opinion, is that it's an opportunity to connect with somebody who might want to read your work. So I look at it as a, a doorway. You can open a door to your life to show a little bit about who you are so that you can bring in people who are interested in you, who are uh, in some way find a connection with you. And so they might want to then read your work or take your class or, um, or watch your YouTube channel. So to me, an author bio is a really great, easy way to open a door to your life to enable you to connect with readers. That's it. That's interesting. How could something so short accomplish such a grand <laughs> thing? Like what are some practical elements that a bio should include to be able to both connect with readers and satisfy the expectations of somebody like a publisher or, um, you know, somebody who's asking you to speak or some of those other things that you talked about? Well, if you were to go out and read a whole bunch of author bios, you can do that on Goodreads or Amazon or looking at uh, the jackets of the books that you have in your own personal library. And you're going to find common elements like the author's name and maybe what part of the world they're from and and maybe what genre they write in. And, um, and then from that point, it gets sort of blurry. There's commonalities like maybe you'll see a my favorite author is, or my favorite hobby is, that sort of thing. 
But I try not to look at an author bio in terms of what elements you should put in it. I look at it instead in terms of a bigger picture of my goal is to connect. So how can I connect with the person that's reading my bio? I also want to make sure that I not only connect in that initial moment, but that I'm able to maintain that sort of relationship by being really authentic in my author bio and showing a real picture of who I am. Because if I tell you that I'm really into horse racing and you connect with me on that level, and but I'm not really into horse racing, the minute you get to know me a little better, you find out that I'm really not into that thing that drew you to me then I've essentially pushed you away from me. I'm not, what message am I trying to convey to the person reading my bio? And how can I authentically present myself in a way that that is interesting um, and genuine? And uh, so, so I look at author bio through that lens rather than through the lens of um, these are the, this is the checklist of the things that you should include. I have a different checklist. I made up a little mnemonic for, uh, what sorts, how you should look at the information that goes in your bio. And the mnemonic is IMPACT, M-P-A-C-T. And that stands for message. Think about what your message, you want message, your message to be. Uh, P is for professional. Make sure that it is professional in every sense of the word. That doesn't mean it has to be academic and boring, but it means there shouldn't be any misspellings. It should be appropriate to the venue, that sort of thing. Ah, and A is for appropriate. So not just appropriate to the venue, but appropriate for what you're selling. If I'm writing books for kids, my bio may be different than if I'm writing books for an adult. Or if I'm writing erotica, then my, my bio may be very different because I want my bio to be appropriate to that venue. C in the impact mnemonic, C is for consistent, which means that I want to be consistent within the bio, but also I want to be consistent with the other material that's out in the world about me, and I want to be consistent with reality. And then T is to the point. I want to make it really to the point of, of uh, the, the goal I'm trying to accomplish, and if it's for a teaching a job where somebody's going to introduce me because I'm teaching a class, then my bio is going to be more focused on that teaching element of my background. And then also that to the point reminds us to edit and edit out anything that is not appropriate or professional or consistent or anything that doesn't convey the message I'm trying to convey. So this is a long answer. But I love my little impact mnemonic because it can really be useful for any public facing work that you're putting out there. So you can use the impact mnemonic for your website, for your author photo, in addition to your author mm -hmm. bio. You can even use it for your, your, um, your back cover copy. You can think about on the back of my book, what do I want to say? And use that mnemonic for that purpose. I wanted to follow up on, on that mnemonic. I think it's, it's a great way of looking at an author bio I love a list and so I was kind of hoping for those those elements just tell me what needs to go in there but but I agree that 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 is a more um fluid but meaningful way of thinking about it so again just to follow up on on an aspect that you just talked about the the message the m when you're presenting a bio for teaching or something you can you can skew it toward what's the value that I'm giving somebody in a lesson for example but if I'm writing a I don't know like a monster novel what how does message play into the 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 bio like what what how would that translate in a situation like no. that if, if I were writing a thriller and it's like an adventure story and I've got somebody who's really brave and he's out there and he's climbing mountains, my main character, then I may want to, in my bio, highlight those things that I do that would attract people that are interested in that. So, you know, um, I, I have not actually climbed a mountain, but if I had, I could say, you know, attempts to climb every 14er in the state of Colorado and has succeeded on half or something like that to show that that these are my people, this is my area. Um, so that would be a message of I'm adventurous. 
Um, I like and to credible in the in the sense of what you're writing. Yeah. If I were in fact telling the truth. <laughs> Well, um, let's just assume, let's just assume that yeah, as a baseline, a don't lie about um, yourself. Don't lie yeah. on your resume. Don't lie on your so dating profile. Don't tell the truth. lie in your author bio. <laughs> well, I have a really fun bio I'd like to read as an example of message. And then I'm going to oh, put you on the spot, Carly, and you can tell me what oh, message no. <laughs> you get from it. What message do you get from this? Okay. All right. Let's, um, let's see. And, uh, so this is for another Colorado author, and this is the bio that is on her Amazon page. So Veronica R. Callisto is a massage therapist, an alto, a writer of speculative fiction, and a big nerd. One of those rare Colorado natives, she has a degree in molecular cellular developmental biology and is a two-time American Idol reject. Veronica is best described as a walking musical who might also be a figment of her own imagination. She is the author of several books, including Diary of a Mad Black Witch and the first two in the Sparkle Tits Chronicles series. So what, this is a real bio. I did not make this up. This is what is posted on Amazon. So, so what message did you get from that bio? I got, I got the cheese. Funny, interesting, doesn't take herself all that seriously. So I would expect her stuff to be fairly light and eclectic, occasionally thoughtful, but mostly just fun. That would yeah, be Yeah, so she's got she's got my, the good. My read. She's, she's, yeah, no, I totally agree with you and because I know Veronica and I know her work, I can tell you that you're spot on. She conveys a lot of different messages in this really really short bio. Um she she lets you know that she's intelligent and educated, but also that she doesn't take herself very seriously. So I'm going to extrapolate from that either consciously or subconsciously as a reader and go, okay, so I can probably expect her work is not going to have a whole lot of errors in it. It's going to be well-written, but it's probably going to be pretty funny. I mean, I love her voice in this bio, so I'm probably mm. going to love her voice and her work. Now, if this were the bio for somebody who wrote a manual on how to repair an elevator you probably I wouldn't trust it. <laughs> find a love match there, right? It's like, yeah. wow, okay, so am I expecting that this person who's telling me how to fix an elevator doesn't really take themselves very seriously? And would I find that a credible source of information? So you want your bio to convey a message that's consistent with reality, like who you really are, and also consistent with the work you're promoting. So if her work were very academic and serious, um, and gritty or any of those other adjectives, you probably would not find a love match with this bio because you're attracting people who want playful and funny and not taking yourself too seriously. And if they open up your novel and find that, okay, this is really heavy, serious stuff, you may have, have a miss there, somebody who's not going to continue reading your book. And you also, at the same time, may be not attracting the people who would love your very serious, dark, gritty work because your bio is so playful and not serious. Yeah, my, that my... illustrates message a little bit. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that makes it a lot clearer because my brain's kind of spinning with all these different ideas, but you can you can prime people to expect voice, to expect genre, to expect tone, to expect some of these things just in the way that you're talking about the elements of yourself that you choose to talk about and the way that you choose to talk about them. Yeah, that was, uh, when you, when you first read the bio, I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure about it, but then you're right. Once you peel back the layers and realize how much that preps the right readers to respond to, um, to her work, then, um, that's, it's, it's, uh, more genius than it appears maybe at, at first glance. Yes, exactly. Well, so what I would recommend to a new author uh, or somebody wanting to revamp their bio is to brainstorm and write down anything and everything you can think of. Like you should have a list that's 42 times longer than, than this bio of things that you might include. Um, for me, I, I might on that brainstorming list, I might put that um, I wrote a thesis on the socio-cultural evolution of Cinderella. Okay, that's something I did that sort of relates to my writing. And so that might go on my list. And um, and that I have a service dog might go on my list, that I have three kids might go on my list. So there's lots of different things that might go on my list. 
But then I'll take my mnemonic and I'll say, okay, what message am I trying to convey? And if I'm, if I'm submitting something to an academic journal and I think it's, it's appropriate for me to convey this message that I wrote a thesis and it was about this academic subject that has to do with fairy tales that somehow relates to my writing, that might be appropriate. But in every venue that I have put a bio out, that's not been appropriate. That tidbit about myself has not made the list. If I were writing, um, if I were doing a resume for a job that related to that, then it might make the list. So a bio as an author is not just a condensed version of your resume. It's really taking a look at your, your whole life, your body of work as a human being, and what elements of those things help you to connect with readers who are gonna wanna read the product that you're putting out into the world. So yes, make that really big list, start with your resume if you want to, but then I'm hoping when you get to that last element of the mnemonic that reminds you to edit, that you really think about, okay, does this item on my list really do all the work that I want it to do? Or is it perhaps working against me? Now, for me, I write really, I would say, light, easy to read. Even my nonfiction is very quick, easy to read, short words, very to the point, very direct. It's not academic. So even in my nonfiction work, I don't reference my academic thesis because it mm. works against me. It gives the impression that my my writing, my product that I'm putting out into the world, it may also be very academic and it's not. So you already answered one of the other, my next questions that I was going to ask, which is what do you do if you are a first time author and you don't have, I'm a USA Today bestseller or or things like that. It sounds like regardless of whether you've hit the New York Times or, or whatever, whatever other awards or books you can reference, the process is essentially the same and and there's no reason to sell yourself short if you don't have this whole backlist of credentials. Um, yeah, and credentials are boring to read typically. So so even if you had a bunch of credentials, I'd really question if you want to put those in there. If I'm a USA Today or New York Times bestselling author, absolutely, I'm going to lead with that. But I don't need to list every award I've ever received. Um, most of the questions I get from authors about their bios are not about, oh, I have too many things to list. I don't know what to delete. It's mostly, I don't know what to list. I'm unpublished. Or I, I recently critiqued somebody's bio that um, he's done a lot of writing in short stories and is multi-published in short stories, but he's writing his first novel. And so in his bio, it said, and he is attempting his first novel. And I thought, I asked him why. Why did you put that in your bio? What's the purpose of that? Because I understand wanting to be honest and say, I don't, I haven't written a novel and you should always be honest, but you don't have to tell them everything about yourself. Tell the truth, but not necessarily the whole truth. Um, I don't have to say this is my first attempt at a novel. I can say multi-published in short stories and leave it at that. Uh, so think about when you are listing your credentials or you have maybe an inclination to apologize for not having a credential, what work is that doing in your bio? And is that doing really what you want it to do? Maybe it is, but ask the question, is this element doing something? Um, am, am I being purposeful in including this? If you don't have a lot of credentials, I would say you are a human being with an interesting history that made you who you are today and who you are today is the person who wrote the novel that you are promoting or is teaching the class that you're promoting so when you write your bio think about those elements about yourself that would be interesting and compelling and um inviting uh mm -hmm. to people who might want to either read the book or take the class and those are the things you want to include leave out the other stuff and apologizing for not having done more is, is not very inviting. It doesn't inspire confidence in the readers who are going to. I see this a lot in people who are writing a query letter, which a query letter 
is um, um, uh, an outreach to an editor or agent to say, hey, do you want to read my work? And typically in a query letter, you have a little bio section. And I see so many query letters where people in their bio are saying, well, I'm not published and I haven't won any awards and you know, I've only been writing for a year. And I think, why? Why are you, I mean, don't be dishonest, but is that really when you have 300 words to, to, to talk about yourself? Do you really want to say what you're not? Or would right. it be you want to choose that to as one of the, the elements that you're including? Yeah, I, I like to think about um, the, the words on the page as real estate, that you have a certain amount of real estate on that page that you can devote to your bio, uh, however many words you're allowed or is appropriate for the, for the venue. And you, you're not going to tell your life story in that short amount of real estate. You don't have to be 100% um, revealing about your backstory. You can choose exactly what you want to include in that limited real estate. And then, of course, always be honest. And if somebody asks you, have you ever been published and you haven't, then you say no. But it doesn't have to go up front on that real estate that people see first. That's This This advice has been so good. I'm in a place where I am ready to revamp my first author bio that I did when I was first published. Um, Amazon needs to get a better version. So now I have all these all these great ideas. Um, do you have any other resources or places that people can go if they want to do a deep dive on this or uh, and look at other types of, um, I don't know, when you publish when you publish a book, it's not just the novel that you're writing. It's it's the bio, it's the blurb on the back. It's all those little pieces. So are there any other places that, public that you would recommend? Information. Yeah, yes, that you would recommend yes, absolutely. that people could find and investigate that further. So I used to be a regular columnist for Kobo Writing Life. Kobo is uh, kind of like Kindle, um, very popular in um, Canada and, uh, and countries other than the U.S., becoming more popular in the U.S. I encourage all writers to check out Kobo Writing Life because there's an incredible wealth of resources there. And when I was blogging for them, I had a column called Tools for Writers. And so I look at all of these public facing things like your bio, your author photo, your website, all of those public facing pieces of information. Those are all tools, tools you can use to connect to potential readers of your work. So I address them in my Tools for Writers blog. So all of those articles can be linked through my website which is chrismandeville.com. There's a section on tips and info for writers. So you can find that there. I also recommend that you look into reputable sources of information like Writer's Digest, for example. Uh, those are um, venues where you can find up-to-date current information that's relevant to today's writer. Something from 10 years ago may not be accurate today. Something from two years ago may not be accurate today. So look at news sources that you find credible. Also, um, go to conferences that are credible, like uh, Carly and I were just at Pikes Peak Writers Conference. That's an amazing resource for information on how to write your back club cover blurb on the back of your novel, how to write a query letter, that sort of thing. So look for reputable sources and look for current sources of information. Well, thank you so much. Um, you've already given your your email, or not your email address, your website. I don't know why I'm just tripping over my words today. Um, it's because you're thinking about your bio and all the things it, that you're going to go write as soon as we say goodbye. It must be. <laughs> um, is, there, is there any other place you want to direct people online to find you or books that you would like to pitch before we go? Well, um, my books are all uh, linked on my website to various places that you might buy them. They are all wide, meaning they're not just Amazon specific, but you can find them anywhere. And you can request all my books through libraries and bookstores, indie bookstores. Uh, I will mention that my new series is a children's book series about my service dog, Oski. And we are, uh, we are forming teamoski.com. And uh, there you will learn about his new books that are coming out and be able to nominate schools and libraries in your area to receive free books 
as uh, as part of this new series that we're doing. So I'd love to have y'all join teamoski.com. I I love that. I love that so much. Oski is just one of my favorite beings. So I'll be sure to link all of that stuff down below if you want to check out more um the the books, pictures of Oski, all the good stuff. There's baby so, pictures of him on the website which are really fun. <laughs> uh, I get all teary just thinking about it. <laughs> it's just, yeah, he's just a gem. Well, thank you so much for um, spending the afternoon with me, Chris, and talking me through some of the best practices of author bios. I know I have a lot to think about, and hopefully this was helpful for other people as well. So make sure to like this, subscribe to Carly Stevens books if you want more um, just great stuff like this, and I will see you next week.